Hello there. In continuation with our previous video lecture on ecosystem, today we will be looking at one of its most important functions that is energy flow. Now the term energy is the capacity to do work. Irrespective of any field, be it physics, chemistry or biology, energy is always the ability of a system to do work. And living beings are a system that require a lot of energy input, much more in comparison to machines because living beings need to continuously grow, respire, they need to move around, at times they need to undergo reproduction. So each of these activities requires a lot of energy. And the main source of energy for any organism is the food that it takes in, is the food that it eats. But for plants which do not eat any food, they have the source of energy as sun. So the plants take up the radiant energy of the sun and convert it into food by the process of photosynthesis. So that food is the one which is made available to all the other organisms. From the plants, it goes on to herbivores and then it goes to carnivores. Then it goes to the omnivores, the top consumers. So it is from the plants that the energy is being passed on. But the plants themselves are obtaining this energy from the sun. So the energy is flowing in the ecosystem and that energy is flowing starting with the sun. Now, whenever we talk about energy, we have to keep in mind the laws of thermodynamics. Now, in biology, the two major laws of thermodynamics that are having an important role or the laws which we need to know about are the first two laws of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics says that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It just transforms or moves or shifts from one form to the other. Now, this is also called as the law of conservation of energy. And it just means in simple terms that I cannot create or I cannot destroy any energy. I just have to keep shifting it. It is like a shape shifting. It has to just shift from one form into the other form. A simple example of this is the conversion of solar energy from the sun by the process of photosynthesis into chemical energy in the form of food which is present in the plants. So there itself you can see in the transformation as shown in the diagram here, the energy before which is the solar energy and the energy after that is the chemical energy are equal that there is no destruction or reduction, there is no addition of energy over there. It is just being shifted from one form to the other. Now, because we cannot create energy, because this energy needs to be transferred, it means to say that it has to go through the ecosystem. Like I told you earlier, it has to come from the sun to the plants, from the plants to the herbivores, from the herbivores to the carnivores. There has to be an energy flow. The second law of thermodynamics has several statements which have been given by several scientists. Some of the common ones which you might have, been, which you might have heard of are that heat can flow only from a warm object or a hot object towards a cold object and it can never go the other way. So that is one of the laws statement which you might have heard of that is applicable for heat engine. But what is more important for us in biochemistry or in biology is the concept of entropy. Now what the second law says is that the entropy of a system always increases. Entropy here is a measure of disorderness or the randomness of a system. It is basically energy that is unavailable to do work or you can say that it is a measure of dispersal of energy. So this energy which is unavailable to do work or the disorder of a system or the randomness of a system keeps increasing with every transformation that occurs. That is what the second law states. So the entropy only increases. There are a few instances where the entropy can remain the same. That happens only when the state of system does not change. But otherwise, it always increases. It never decreases. Thus, it means to say that whenever there is an energy transformation, not all the energy can be converted into work. We cannot use entire energy to do work. Some of that energy, energy remains unusable. That is what is shown in the diagram here. So we had energy getting transformed into energy later. Both are equal in quantity. However, the usable energy is a chunk of this energy and there is a small part of the energy which is unavailable to do work or it is unusable energy. So this is exactly what the second law says that the entropy of a system always increases and it can never, we can never use the entire energy to convert into work. Now, this is applicable 
for for all the systems be it an open system or a closed system one good example of an open system is a human body the reason being in a human body there is continuous exchange of energy input of energy is there there is input of materials in the form of water minerals food so we are an open system and for us this law is very very applicable another example of a closed system is earth so in earth we have only energy transfer that is happening with the surroundings there is no transfer of matter now even the living beings are having a constant energy input to maintain their highly ordered state it means to say that the cells inside a living system are highly ordered and they have less entropy however whenever there is an energy transformation taking place to maintain this orderliness of the cell energy is lost to the environment so the cell remains ordered the cell and the body continues to remain ordered but the process makes the surrounding entropy increase so this continuously when you can see there are hundreds and thousands of animals and plants and human beings around us everybody is trying to keep its cells in an orderly state which means to say everybody is releasing a lot of energy into the surroundings just because the entropy is increasing so the surrounding entropy keeps increasing this ultimately leads to or this ultimately results in the entropy of the universe increasing so each component on earth is increasing the entropy around it which means to say ultimately it is the universe entropy that is increasing this has this dissipation of matter and this dissipation of energy keeps going on in the universe till the universe is infinitely disordered so the randomness has reached its peak and the entropy can no longer increase that state of the universe is called as the heat death of the universe so eventually it says that this theory says that eventually the stars will cool down the heat would have spread so much that everything on earth will be or in the universe will be of the same temperature there will be no there will be no more presence of warmer or colder objects and the entropy can no more increase this ultimately will lead to death of the universe so that is one theory that is stemming from this second law of thermodynamics that says that every living being is continuously releasing energy because it not needs to maintain its cells in orderliness and in this process it is increasing the entropy of the surroundings second thing to remember here is this energy transformation when it is taking place there is energy that is getting wasted not all of it is getting converted into work so keeping these two laws in mind let us look at how in an ecosystem the energy flow occurs so in an ecosystem in any ecosystem be it an aquatic ecosystem or a terrestrial ecosystem energy flow is always always unidirectional it flows energy flows only in one direction that direction starts with the sun and it may end with the producer it may end with the primary consumer with the secondary consumer that doesn't matter but it always flows only in one direction it can always flow only from the sun it can never we can never give back energy to the sun so the sun is the primary source of energy it is the uh, main uh, source of energy on the earth and this solar energy is trapped by the producers which are shown in the green rectangle by the process of photosynthesis now all the blue arrows are showing the flow of energy whereas the pink dotted arrows are showing the flow of nutrients so the sun's energy is being trapped by the process of photosynthesis by the plants by the phytoplanktons and every other producers that are there on earth now when this process occurs a part of the energy now a transformation is happening here between the sun and the producers so not all of the energy is getting transformed some of it is getting released in the form of heat which is shown as the orange rectangle so in the first level though a lot of energy is getting converted into food in the plants a part of it does get released into the surroundings in the form of heat now these plants are being eaten up by herbivores and those herbivores are being eaten up by carnivores if you remember from the previous video all of these herbivores carnivores are all called as consumers because they are consuming their food and getting the energy so when a consumer eats these plants they de or a secondary consumer eats a primary consumer they again derive energy from there but remember when they derive energy when the energy transformation takes place a part of it is getting released as heat even at that level now whether it is a dead leaf whether it is a dead animal whether it is a dead human being every one of these is going to get decomposed in the soil so that is being done by decomposers and detritivores these organisms too 
are obtaining energy by the rotting matter, by the rotting dead bodies, dead leaf litter, they are obtaining energy. But here again, if you see, a part of energy is getting released into the environment as heat. So at every level, that is from when there is a transfer of energy from one level to the next level, some energy is being lost to the surroundings as heat. Usually in the process of respiration, this heat is being released. It is assumed that around 90, 25 to 70% of the energy is being released into the environment as heat. Some of the organisms are never eaten. Some of the plants and animals die without being consumed. So their biomass, their energy is never being passed on to the next level. Also, some of our biomass is being excreted as waste. So, around 30 to 60 percent is being excreted and as waste. That is getting available to the decomposers, but that is not available to the next level. So, if you see here, at every point, there is wastage of energy. Either because the animal or plant is not eaten and hence the energy is not passed on to the next level or maybe because excreta is coming out on a daily basis or because Generally, during respiration, the energy is being released as heat. So, every level, at every point, there are, there are there is output of energy which is unavailable for the next level's organism to do work. So, even if I eat a whole pizza, not all the pizza size slices are going to get absorbed in the body and are going to be used to do work. Some amount of it is going to be released in the form of heat, in the form of excreta and I'm, it is unusable for the environment. So, even during decomposition, if you see from the grey box, when the decomposers are breaking down the dead leaf litter or the dead bodies of the animals and human beings, from there, they are releasing all the nutrients, all the elements back into the soil. This is shown as the black coloured rectangle which says inorganic nutrient pool. That is, the nitrogen goes back into soil, carbon goes back into the soil, we have uh, phosphorus, sulfur, everything gets back into the soil so that the plants can absorb it during photosynthesis. But here again, there is no transfer of energy. We are only having transfer of the nutrients. So, if you see here, the pink dotted arrows are moving around in all directions. I have producers giving nutrients to consumers, consumers giving nutrients to decomposers, decomposers releasing back those nutrients into the soil and from there again the producers are picking it up during photosynthesis. But the, the blue colored arrows, that is the energy arrows, are ending with the decomposers. There is no more release of energy. So that means to say energy flow in an ecosystem is happening in a unidirectional manner. It is at every one of these positions, there is some amount of energy being released. So, that is why it is called as unidirectional. It doesn't go back to the sun or doesn't go back to the producers. Now, this energy release or this loss of energy can be explained by the 10% energy rule. This rule states that with every level, only 10% of the energy stored as biomass is passed on to the next level. This is called as the 10% rule or the 10% energy rule. It states that only 10% of the energy stored as biomass. Biomass is the weight. So, only 10% of the energy stored as biomass at a particular level is passed on to the next level in any ecosystem. So, that limits the number of levels that you an ecosystem can support. Now, when I say levels, when I tell stage, each of those stages is called as a trophic level. So, the first trophic level is the first stage of energy exchange. Second trophic level is second stage of energy exchange. Each of these positions that I am showing you here is called as a trophic level. And together, these trophic levels are forming a food chain. We will look at food chain in detail in our next lecture. But the trophic level is the level at which energy exchange is taking place or it is a group of organisms which are you know having the similar kind of feeding habit the same kind of energy obtaining they are where they are getting that is called as a trophic level so from one trophic level to the next trophic level only 10 percent of the energy is getting passed on rest of it is going waste that means if you see here the producers the grasses which are shown over here they have 100 percent energy but from the grasses, when the sheep eat these grasses, only 10% of that is getting absorbed into the sheep or into the primary consumer or the herbivore. Again, when these sheep are being eaten by the lion, only 1%, that is 10% of that level, is getting passed on to the secondary consumer. So that is the reason any ecosystem 
cannot support several levels several trophic levels because with every level the energy keeps on decreasing so if there are 9 to 10 levels you can imagine the last level hardly gets any energy how much ever food they eat they get very very little energy and that is not that is not possible that is not feasible in a in an ecosystem so every ecosystem if you see will have only 4 to 5 trophic levels in a particular food chain this is the reason the reason being from one trophic level to the next only 10% of the energy is transferred now that brings us to the productivity of an ecosystem so if i tell you only 10% of the energy is transferred how do we measure the productivity now productivity is the rate of production that is how much organic matter is accumulated at any unit of time or how much of organic amount of organic matter that is present at any given unit of time is called as the productivity of an ecosystem now all the biomass the total biomass which is generated by the primary producers now we are talking only about the producers the consumers productivity we are not looking into it we are looking at the productivity which is in relation to the producers that is the plants so all the biomass the total biomass which is generated by the primary producers is called as the gross primary productivity gpp is the total amount of energy and biomass that is generated by the plants or by the producers these plants and these producers do have several of their own body processes so they have respiration because it's plants they don't have any movement but they have respiration they have reproduction for which they use energy so whatever energy is left out after these plants use up the energy for their body processes that leftover energy is called as net primary productivity so the amount of energy that is left over or that is stored finally in the primary producers is called as the net primary productivity the net primary productivity you can say in case of plants is the gross primary productivity minus the respiration rate so that available energy the ultimate available energy for the primary consumers is the npp that is the net primary productivity how much ever gross is there it is not a big you of big of big advantage to us because ultimately what the herbivore or the sheep is going to get is only the net primary productivity the final amount of energy that remains after the plant has used for its own processes so this was about the energy flow in an ecosystem and how this energy flow is affecting the productivity of an ecosystem i hope you all have benefited from this lecture see you all in the next one thank you